now. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Edgar Franco. Please call me Ega. I'll be your anchor for this afternoon in our Relax. Today is Saturday, so it's a good day to have a good conversation with the experts and high and mighty ladies <laughs> for this afternoon. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the early birds. We have now 25 in the room. So maganda hong malaman to where are we coming from and who are here. Please answer the little demographic poll that we have so that we'll get to know who's who in the, <clears throat> in the session this afternoon. For some of you are familiar to answer this, we just want to know what type of talent development practitioner are you? You have some choices here and then where are you calling from? And is this your first time to join us? And I'm sure some of you have been our suki already in this session. Yeah, we'll give you five hours, oh, five seconds only, <laughs> <laughs> so that you'll be able to give us an idea where you are from and who's with us this afternoon. Our chat box is open, so please make sure you click panelists and everyone so that whatever you share in the chat box will be able to see it. And please write your name so that we don't miss out on who's with us this afternoon. Dan. Yes, we have Concepcion Castro with us. Good afternoon din po. <clears throat> Melody Omaga, welcome. And here's the result of the poll. Yan. Wow. We have 41% educators who's with us this afternoon. And next is, wow, marami ngayon ng ating pantay pala ang managers and executives, consultants in learning and development. Good, there's a good number of coach and mentor. And some are from other fields. Halos lahat Tagaluson. Ang laki ng Tagaluson, 94%. And maayong hapon sa inyong tanan, taga Bisaya. And majority is not their first time. 18% are their first time. Yes, that's how we are today. Good. We won't make you wait too long because we'd like to start off the activity or the discussion with our guests this afternoon. Let me first introduce our moderator this afternoon. You've seen her before because she's a very suke in our sessions, we have Cecil Terrible, the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Club Balay Isabel, Sikatutong Club Balay Isabel. She believes that her over 30 years experience in the HR training field has prepared her for her current role. Since the pandemic, she has rediscovered her love for painting and writing. Wow, very creative. And let's welcome our moderator, Miss Cecil Terrible. Hi, Cecil. Hi, thank you, Edgar, for the very, very nice introduction. And uh, well, now I'm with Bala Isabel, but I, I, in my past life, I was really uh, HR and training uh, in, in that field. So, ano tayo, magkakasama tayo. Ayan. So this chillak is uh, a relaxed and happy quintuhan of you know how we will apply learnings from the webinar. Okay, so uh, just a few reminders for the attendees um, before we start. The first reminder is that you will be on mute. The attendees will be on mute, so we can manage the flow of information. Pero don't worry because if you have questions and answers and uh, comments, you can use the Q&A tab, which you find on Zoom. It's uh, at the bottom. Yeah. So you can use that for your comments, inputs. Yeah. Also, uh, we can issue certificates to those who will answer post-evaluations. So, you know, make sure you have time to do the post-evaluation. So we will send the post-evaluation via email only if you stay for at least 40 minutes naman in the call. Ayan. 
Okay, so before I in, ready now, kaya tayo ready na. So uh, today we have we are very lucky to have two top-notch and very seasoned HR practitioners as panelists, and uh, we're going to talk about this week's webinars: the coaching ni Julius or Donies and the mentoring of Miss Maribel. But before I introduce the lady panelists, let me recap the session's highlights. Alam nyo, napapanahon talaga yung coaching and mentoring kasi pandemic nga. So a lot of people are feeling anxious. And I think most of us uh, instinctively are already doing coaching and mentoring, both at work and even in our homes. Diba? So, uh, I th so I think the topics are very relevant. Uh, let me just recap some of the key high or the key points in the webinars. Yung sa coaching, yung kay Julius, you know what I find to be really a good takeaway was when he said that uh, a coach should ask, should, should uh, know how to ask powerful questions. No? And that those powerful questions should lead to reflection, uh, to shift perspective, evoke new mindsets and attitudes, stretch capabilities, and move the person forward with concrete action. So, nagbigay siya ng maraming examples dyan. Okay. And on Maribel's session naman, yung traditional concept of a mentor na, you know, ang sinasabi natin, a mentor, <coughs> uh, um, knowledge expert, hindi na pala totoo yun. So, Ms. Maribel updated us of the many roles that a mentor can take now. You can be a confidant, protector, cheerleader, broker, role model, coach, challenger, and a sponsor. Ayon. So, that evolved na. That evolved na. Um, so now, uh, let me proudly introduce our panelists. And uh, I should mention that both of them have concrete, exa uh, concrete uh, experience first-hand knowledge of um, introducing coaching slash mentoring programs in their organizations. So, it talaga mga top-notch ito, very seasoned. Uh, let me begin with Ms. Wen Subido. Wen? Okay, so Ms. Wen is the first vice president and group head for human resources of RCBC. She has over 30 years of experience in HR. And she has worked with Citibank, with Guess USA, with John Clements. And uh, her, you know, HR must be a big thing in their household because her husband is also <laughs> an HR practitioner. Yeah. But um, you don't know that Wen is also a musician. <laughs> Magaling ko man ta magpiano. Yan. Sana makapag-sample later. Okay, so that's when or Miss Rowena Subido. Good afternoon everyone. And uh, thanks uh, PSTD for inviting me and I'm really excited to be part of this uh, Chillax, the chill uh, conversation. Thanks Cecil. Okay. Now, the second panelist is another lady, another very uh, highly respected um, HR manager, and she is Miss Angela Valenzuela. Ayan. Or call her Ange for short. She is the talent development and OD manager of Petron. She has been with Petron for 27 years. Wow. And I was telling her that my first job was with Petron uh, much earlier than 27 years. <laughs> okay, uh, she's a mother of two boys. And um, her husband, Binky, is in the construction industry. Ayan. She's a jardinera. Ayan. Nagtatanim siya ng mga uh, ornamental plants. Pero mas gusto niya yata yung mga okra, pet, chai. Ayan, marunong siya doon. Hey, so welcome, Anj. Can we show Anj? Hi, Cecil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chilax, a very relaxing learning session. I'm also glad to be here. 
and uh, to share the afternoon with you. Okay, thank you, Aj. So now we um, go straight away with a question. For the participants, you, know, you can also uh, ask your questions or react to uh, what our panelists are saying or have additional inputs through the chat box. Ayon, click nyo lang yung chat box. Okay, so for our first question, ito, no? mukhang napapanahon talaga yung coaching at lahat tayo gusto magsimula nitong coaching and mentoring. But how do we do it? How did you start your coaching and mentoring program in your organization? And what are the benefits and challenges? So I told you both these ladies had first-hand experience in implementing a coaching and mentoring program in their organization. So let's, let me call on Ange. Okay. So, magkikwento ako. Uh, our coaching journey started in 2015. Medyo matagal na, no? Uh, it started with one of our leadership development programs. The program requires the participants to come up with a project that will address current issues of the organization. At that time, uh, kasi merong HR dun sa participante, eh. uh, they chose a very relevant uh, issue. At that time, it was yung walang kamatayang retention and engagement. So, when they chose that issue, ang intervention na naisip nila was coaching. So, that was 2015. They presented the programs to several of our executives from the management committee. So, sa kaka-present nila, nakailang tatlong ulit yata ng presentation, nakuha nila yung buy-in ng panel. So, good for us, no? Kasi yun yung mga executives namin, eh. So, after the presentation and the project was approved by the panel, we had almost one year to develop the program. Medyo matagal, no? So for one year, we tightened the objectives. Number one. Number two, nag-develop na kami ng guidelines. So when we developed the guidelines, we had so many consultations, no? Also with the same management committee, we had consultations from people from outside Petron. We had consultations with Julius and his group who had been very helpful to us, no? In fact, sa kakakonsulta namin kay Julius, we adapted his framework, the ICF framework. So, uh, tapos nun, hindi lang namin in yung framework ni Julius. Ang nangyari pa, all our coaches, before they could coach, had to undergo the three-day certificate program of Julius. Yun. And then, after developing the guidelines, nag-develop na rin kami ng process, end-to-end -end process. So, magmula sa paano mamimili ng coaches, paano mamimili ng coaches, anong qualifications nila, paano na yung coaching journey, paano imomonitor. We had, to, we had to devise a very strong monitoring mechanism kasi, ayaw naman, kasi one-year cycle yun eh. Ayaw naman namin sabihin, oh, bahala na kayo ha, magkita na lang tayo after one year. So we had to develop a very tight uh, monitoring scheme para hindi nila ma-feel na pinabayaan sila ng HR. And then after the end-to-end -end process, we also developed the forms. Uh, we had to develop the coaching agreement, parang contract nila the individual development plans, the progress monitoring report, the evaluation report. So from then, 2017, we had our pilot run. The pilot run had uh, seven coaches and 13 P's. And then it was a very successful pilot run. The following year, full-blown na kami. We had 50-plus coaches. Ilan na ba? 50-plus coaches and 30... No, 50 plus, uh, 50 plus coaches and 30 plus uh, coaches. And then we've been improving the program from then on until now. It's still work in progress. Our succession team has been very hands-on. So, binabantayan nila sino na yung kulang pa sa coaching session, sino pa yung, uh, sino yung hindi na meet yung goals, tapos sino yung 
sino uh, coaches yung may ano na mag-resign. So, sobrang tutok sila. So, we make it a point that every year we introduce improvements to um, to tighten the program more. Mm-hmm. Wow, talaga pala ang, ang tindi ng preparations, Anj. Yeah. No? Oo. Oh, but when you said uh, the program has been very successful, Ano yung ano mo doon? Ano yung ano yung nangyari? What what difference did you did you see? You know, why is it continuing and and getting bigger and bigger? Yeah. The coaches are high potentials who are 2 to 5 years in service. They will get out of the program when they graduate from the program, which means kasama na sila sa succession plan. Yon. So the more the more coaches who join the succession plan, that's our success indicator, that they have been meeting their objectives. And uh, they have been uh, very successful in the coaching journey. Kasi it's also a collaboration of the coach and the boss. Eh. So the co- coach and the boss would sit down and talk uh, about the goals of the coach. So just to make sure also na tama yung goals na ine-establish ng coach. Mm-hmm. Oh, kasi nga, I think you you were saying this addresses your retention and engagement. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Anj. Um, does anyone else have something to add to that among the participants or or when? Yeah. Okay. From from our end, um, from RCBC, no. So we started coaching in RCBC about like uh, 2013. Um, ang, ang, ang sa amin naman, um, it's really more of uh, skills building. No? We, we're, we're trying to really like uh, develop um, coaches within the organization. So as Anj as, has mentioned, uh, we have uh, the Coaching for Success no? workshops for, for this uh, particular people. Um, at that time, no, in 2013, the thrust or the uh, priority no, of our uh, president is to strengthen the leadership bench, okay? So we have established um, the RCBC Leadership University. So kada academy within the RCBC Leadership uh, University, we have a coaching module. So assuming, uh, probably an example will be a middle management uh, development uh, uh, program. So each of the uh, leadership uh, track, no? so pagkatapos lahat ng mga usual leadership programs like leading, motivating, and all of those uh, leadership skills building, ang ending nun parati, ang dulo namin parati doon, will really be coaching. In other words, uh, the, the goal is after all of those uh, leadership uh, track, coaching is there to integrate, parang to tie them in uh, uh, together. No? So, so um, we wanted to, you know, we, we collaborated with uh, uh, Julius and uh, his team, no? uh, Benchmark Consulting. Um, we, we wanted to really train our, our leaders to be, to be good coaches. So basics lamang, no? allowing, parang we wanted them, uh, we wanted to see these leaders allowing the, the subordinates to, to uh, uh, think, no? so, so that their subordinates would really be more, um, uh, confident, no, owning to their uh, choices, decisions, no. Parang yun yung gusto namin i-develop, no, as far as these leaders uh, are concerned. So coaching has always been an integral part of our leadership program, and the RCBC Leadership University is actually a, um, it, it's really a an answer, no, to the development action part of succession management. So so, so that's how we do it. So, so from 2013 till, till, till today, no? till today, we've been doing uh, the uh, coaching sessions, the coaching uh, workshops for our, uh, for our leaders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you, you, you meant uh, for all leaders ba? Kasi si Anj was saying it's for hypo, yung mga hypo uh, nila na, na leaders. Right, so right. It, was it for everybody? Like... Uh, is everybody being offered um, a coaching or a coach after the programs? Okay. So primarily, uh, primarily the, the RCBC Leadership U, the participants there are really for high posts and deep reaches. No? I mean, you know, um, 
close to being being an hi, a hypo. But we we figured, you know, that uh, coaching is really for all uh, leaders. And by leaders, um, we are uh, actually uh, uh, referring to, you know, department head, division head uh, uh, levels. No? Because, because I think this particular skill is kind of, it's really vital no? towards, uh, towards really um, leading a team, developing a team. So, so we embraced also that kind of framework no? wherein ano ba, ano ba dapat, di ba? Ano ba yung mga gagawin mo to, no? to develop a team? And, and coaching and mentoring are really at the, di ba? Parang priority siya. Really at the mm. top of our list. Yeah. So parang ibig mong sabihin when uh, the leaders, uh, your executives and managers should also be coaches. Of course, and, yeah. Yeah, that, but, that's our ano, that's our belief, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, well, thank you for that. I think it's time for our uh, Mentimeter. Okay. So, um, if, you know, coaching and mentoring is an essential way of developing talents, why do you think most leaders still do not coach? Kasi sabi nga ni Wen, you know, it's an essential uh, ingredient of becoming, you know, an executive or manager, a leader. Uh, but do you find this in your organization? No? Most leaders will just, you know, want to tell people what to do, mm-hmm. not coach. So what do you think could be the reason? So we have a Mentimeter. You go to www.menti.com and use the code 57003 for your answer. Okay, we will wait for a while. Meanwhile, you um, just to remind you that you can always uh, uh, type your questions or uh, your inputs on the Q&A boxes. We have a few um, questions here. So from um, Ludi Marie Lawas, actually two questions. Is the coaching program tied to the leadership development program or two separate initiatives? Or, and, and there's another question from her. Hi, good afternoon. What is ICF framework and can you please elaborate how it works? This comes from the same person. So I think before we answer that, we'll go to the results of the Mentimeter first. Okay, so why do most leaders still do not coach? Uh, Because they need to spend time, they don't have time. Wow, strained relationship, maybe with their coaching availability they're not available <laughs> they don't know how to do it <laughs> they're afraid they don't know how wow it, it's a no it's a ang tawag doon dalawa lang available First. time uh, all, all all of the answers would uh, revolve around uh, spending time and they don't know how to do it wow so the uh, the solution seem seem obvious, no? <laughs> Have time and learn. Ayan, yeah. meron workload. Agree. Agree. Train relationship. Oh, thank you, thank you for that, and that's uh, uh, very revealing. And we now continue to um, the questions of uh, the participant. Um, let me repeat that from Ludi Marie Lawas. Hello, Miss Ludi. So she's asking, is the coaching program tied to the leadership development program or two separate initiatives? And what is the ICF framework? And can you please elaborate how it works? Any okay. of the... Uh, yeah, uh, maybe um, I'll answer the, the first question first. As, as I've mentioned um, uh, earlier, um, our coaching uh, program is really tied to our leadership development program because you know it's it's one skill that we really need no uh, for the for leaders to uh, develop so each and every program that that we have in the bank uh, definitely has a uh, a coaching component now on the ICF uh, framework 
probably, you know, it's really better that Julius will be the one to, to explain this, but I can probably just share what I know. Now, because, you know, we've been doing uh, coaching in RCDC using the ICF framework. So, so I, I think he has um, shared last Tuesday that uh, the, the framework is a uh, non-directive uh, model. In other words, it's not, uh, it's not, telling the person what to do. It's self, uh, if I recall it correctly, it's self-directed uh, lear learning. Um, you're allowing your, uh, your um, coachee to, to think and come up with, um, you know, his options, the choices. In other words, you're eliciting it from, uh, from the person. No? Because uh, the, usual, no? the usual leader would always be very antsy to tell really the solution immediately, right? In, in, in coaching, uh, it's really like eliciting this no? from, uh, from this person at hindi sasabihin ko anong dapat niyang, ko anong dapat niyang gawin. No? So, so that, that's, how, that's how that uh, particular framework works. Okay. okay. All right. So, so with us, with us, Cecil, uh, I, uh, it's imperative that uh, coaching and mentoring be tied to uh, leadership development, which is tied to uh, l and which is tied to succession. Kasi para maging relevant siya dun sa organization, dapat embedded siya talaga sa HR function. If it's going to be a standalone program, it will not be sustainable. So for it to be sustainable, it has to be embedded in the HR functions talaga of succession and learning and development. Okay. So the way you the way you design the program, it has to touch both L and D and succession. Para yeah, magtagal right. siya. Yeah, thank you. So there you have it. Uh, both ladies uh, agree that um, coaching and the leadership development program should be tied up with one another. And as to the IPF framework, it seems to be proprietary information. So, but if you want to learn more about ICF, I think Julius has a program on July 23, a webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, he's uh, at, I think 9, 9 a.m. Manila time. That's on the 27th. Oh, 20, let me, let me, 23rd of July from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Yeah, um, Cecil, if I may also add, kasi parang narinig ko sa isang uh, question also earlier na bakit, di ba, bakit hindi, why, why most leaders still do not coach, right? And I think somebody mentioned about the relationship between the coach and uh, the coach, you know. Let me just also comment, <laughs> just, uh, just one minute uh, on that, no. I think it's really about uh, building relationships, no. In most of our coaching class, hindi ko, hindi ko na matandaan ko, nabanggit ni Julius ng Tuesday, but Mostly we say that, you know, you have to have that uh, HOT, hot relationship, no? It's honest, open, and uh, trusting relationship. In the absence of all of those, no, I, I don't think it would work, whether it's coaching or uh, mentoring. So tama yung sinabi nung, nung participant kanina, no, na, uh, you know, it's all about relationship also with, between the coach and the, and the coaching. Mm. So if there's a strained relationship, walang coaching. Wala, wala. Baka hindi, mag, baka hindi mangyari. Yeah. Incidentally, there's another question pa, no? From participant AU. Hello, AU. Um, he's saying, what's your take on using internal versus external coaches and mentors? Any of you ladies, you know, yung internal mas mabuti ba kaysa sa external o mas okay yung tagalabas mm. uh, para kung may pros oh, and may cons yeah. it would really depend on your objective kami we wanted to use internal uh, coaches for the 2 to 5 years in service na coaches kasi we wanted a learning environment in the organization where people are teaching and learning from one another so uh, yun yung framework na ginamit namin, kaya coaching yung naging uh, medium namin. Kasi we, went, we really wanted a learning organization. And now it's working for us, no? Kasi in the time, of, in the season of budget cuts, even if um, training budgets are cut, 
we still have uh, learnings going on in the organization through coaching. Ayon. And that's because you have developed internal coaches. Yes. For, we also have external coaches. Yung external coaches naman would play a different objective. No? If you want uh, an external person to challenge, uh, tapos uh, change mindsets, parang an external coach would be a very good uh, option rather than an internal coach. Para yung comfort level mo, hindi ganun kataas. Medyo ilag ka ng konti. So, Sa, sa amin, na, sa ganun nag-work yung external coaches. Makes sense. How about when? What's your perspective on this? Okay. Uh, well, as, as I mentioned um, earlier, uh, the engagement of RCBC is to really develop um, internal coaches. We have actually gone into um, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, executive coaching at this point. Our direction is really more uh, skills building as far as internal coaches as, are, are concerned. No? So, so ours is, um, is really developing, uh, you know, de developing uh, these leaders no, to really become, uh, you know, to really become good coaches at this point. No? But, but to probably to answer the, the question whether internal or external, it, it, you know, it's, it, it really depends. Right? It really depends on the, the need of uh, the organization. So it could, it, it could really work both ways. Ayun. So there you have it. So sabi, both ladies say, depend on objective mo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, shall we go to the next uh, question? Ayan. So dadalhin na natin dito sa nangyayari ngayon na ano na pandemic na yun nga in demand na in demand ngayon ng coaching and mentoring because a lot of people feel anxious. There's a lot of change happening. So during this pandemic time, how does your organization leverage coaching or mentoring to help people adapt to new ways of work? Is there something special? Is there some is, uh, uh, more focus on coaching and mentoring? Or is there a revision on, on how it should be applied to the organization? Um, when? Yeah, um, okay. Um... Siguro ito, ito yung portion na talaga medyo magkikwento ako ng konti, no? As far as, you know, um, uh, in times of crisis or in times of, uh, uh, you know, the pandemic that we are currently experiencing, no? So, e even before the, even before this uh, crisis, no, that we are experiencing, um, we, we have already collaborated with, uh, uh, well, the team of uh, uh, Benchmark. If you... If you recall, if you recall in 20, November 2013 in particular, we had that Yolanda crisis. I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows that, no? And uh, talagang, talagang uh, naapektohan, no? Yung Tacloban uh, employees namin, Tacloban branch employees namin. And talagang napaisip ako ng todo, no? no? At that time. And uh, sabi namin, paano ba namin matutulungan yung mga empleyado, right? Um, because... Um, you, you, we wouldn't really know the extent of uh, what they have experienced or kung ano yung kailangan nila kung hindi mo talaga aalamin. No? So, so I called up, I called up uh, Julius's team and tinanong ko, sorry ko, kasi um, if, I'm, if, if I'm going to use um, counseling, no, parang babalikan ko pa, di ba? You know, because you, usually counseling is babalikan mo yung mga na-experience, etc., etc., so, so what we did, because as you, as you can recall, November, December, wala electricity ang, uh, ang uh, uh, late, eh, no? So, so we have to do it, we have to do it really in January, immediately after uh, Christmas, but we still cannot do it in Tacloban, no? So, so we did it in Kalbayog summer. So we have to transport all, all our people to uh, Kalbayog. And we, what we did there um, is group coaching, okay? So si Julius at si Adam, no, one of his uh, senior consultants, uh, went with me. Um, Pinag-usapan namin. Uh, kasi para ang, ang gusto, at, at least from my perspective at that time, ang gusto kong mangyari is really, pa, paano ba mag-move forward using uh, the coaching framework? Paano mag-move forward ang mga tao natin rather than being stuck? So if you're going to apply it to the Kubler-Ross curve that 
both our you know our distinguished uh, speakers Tuesday and Thursday Maribel and and Julio, Julius no so so using that no so ma mahat naman tayo in in times of crisis there's shock etc no so so that's what happened there there's shock they're um para they're in denial etc no so we have to really do uh that particular session no? the group coaching so we went there on a saturday because you know because uh there are there are um things that you have to consider also no so so nagpunta kami doon saturday session 5 p.m to 12 midnight ganyan and then we did all of that. Ang maganda lang na nangyari, no, in that particular uh, session using the framework is we were able really to, to you know, to um, elicit from them uh, um, ano ba yung gagawin natin, ano ba yung next steps natin. No? So ano ba, yung mga, ano ba yung mga options natin at this point? Ano ba yung mga actionable plans, no? Short term, whether short term or, or, or uh, medium term. You know, at the end of uh, at the end of the uh, session, ma ma feel mo eh, no? that they're they're already they're ready to move forward. Instead of you know, instead of uh, being stuck on, on what had happened, alam niyo naman ko anong di ba ko ano ang nangyari doon? No? Nag talagang kinwento sa amin, etc. No, but but you know the the best the, the the best thing that had happened there is everybody was really willing to uh, move forward. Parang na na, na realize nila there was really a great realization that uh, I, I, I really have to make a decision diba, at this point that uh, I will have to move forward and I will have all you know all the available options for me uh, you know to rise not to rise above this challenge so so that was the that was the first uh, experience no? and and we were very grateful because Naku, baka, ma, baka mapagalitan ako ng benchmark dito. Pero sasabihin ko, we were very grateful because benchmark did not charge me anything. <laughs> Naku, baka mapagalitan ako. But benchmark did not charge me anything. It was pro bono. No? So I, I, I really appreciated that because, um, you know, your employees can see through you eh, if you're faking it, right? They, they, your employees can, can see through you if you have genuine concern. And I think those are, you know, those are, very uh, essential no in in delivering a coaching uh, a coaching uh, session no so if you're going to relate it today uh, given what we have been experiencing ganun din no ganun din alam naman nating lahat nung sinabi ng gobyerno na mag ecq tayo on on march uh, uh, 15 even before that our bank um, has already been uh, telling our employees na 50% lamang ng workforce uh, namin ang pwedeng pumasok, no? And, and and you know for a fact that the banking industry did not stop operations. So so everybody was really shocked. In fact, they were even you know they were even asking, ano ba tong HR nito? Alam ba nito nila nalalaman nila? You know we're we're gonna you know we're gonna cut all all um uh, all of those people na hindi dapat pumasok, etc. etc. But but you know at the end of the day they they realize that they just have to you know they just have to um, to accept, no, that uh, uh, these things are really being done for for them, no. Uh, you know, kudo, parang kudos to the to the leaders that they have practiced, no, this this particular this particular skill, no, of uh, um, uh, really, you know, really um, making our people uh, realize that we need to do this, and these are all. Uh, the things that we have to decide on no uh, at this point no so so uh, fortunately uh, since we're gcq already uh, gcq already for uh, by by june 1 all of us in the bank are really kind of ready no to to move forward wala na nag-uusap na ano nangyari sa no abril ano ba nangyari sa yon ng ng uh, mayo no so so i think um you know embedding all of this um skills no this the skills of a coach diba? in each and every leader uh, really made a difference for us eh. no it really made a difference for us because there are really there are really times na uh, you just have to make a decision diba? you just have to make a decision you just have to move forward no and just don't get stuck no in 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 the situation no? so so that's my cuento that's my cuento no as wow. far as our bank is concerned yeah that's a very good cuento, no? 
Ah, ako kasi yung like yeah, yeah, victims of Yolanda yung branch. And then you did uh group coaching. So pwede pala yung group coaching, yung Pwede, pwede. Mm-hmm. Marami din yung coachi. Mm-hmm. So ng pandemic, pwede rin nating gawin kaya yun, no? Na parang group coaching, mas marami nga lang. I I think I think so. Yes, I think so. Uh in fact, um I think there their uh, benchmark is also um, offering, parang nabanggit din yata niya yun, no? offering also uh, uh, group coaching. No? So, so, of course, uh, it, it, they're offering it, pero siyempre kailangan skilled ka. Di ba? Kailangan skilled ka talaga to do group coaching because it's not really very easy. It's not very easy. Yeah. I wonder how, you know, just not really asking the question. I'm just wondering... Uh, ano yung ratio na kasi pandemic di ang daming kailangang i-coach. Oh. Pwede ka one coach, 100 coaches. Parang <laughs> Siguro ba? <laughs> Siguro si na ano makakasagot niya ano Ange. <laughs> Magkakasakit yung coach. Baka <laughs> <laughs> so, overwhelmed. Baka so, overwhelmed. Sa amin, maximum of two coaches eh, per coach. <laughs> oh. Siguro, depende nga dun sa ano, objective, no? Yeah, yeah, depends uh, on objective, yeah. Like like in Tacloban, we were uh kung hindi ako nagkakamali, we were actually nine. Yung mga ano ko ha, mga empleyado ko. Uh, mm-hmm. parang yeah, eight or nine and then uh, uh Julius and Adam are there and then myself. Ganon. Ganon yung ano namin. So, ganon yung uh, uh scale or or yung yung number of uh, participants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the case of... At saka, hindi lang ta- saka, oh. saka Cecil, hindi lang takloban yun. Ha? Inulit pa namin ang Ormok yun. <laughs> so, ganun oh. yan. Mga nine or- yeah, we also did it uh, in Ormok uh, sometime March. So, yun. Yeah. So, it, it's, it's effective. Yeah, it's effective. Oh, so, in that case, na there's a crisis and then there's coaching, how do you then know that uh, the coaching is successful? pag nakabalik na o hindi na bumabanggit nung ano nung <laughs> so i think the success you're talking about parang success metric eh, oh. no success measure A- ako kasi sa akin simple lang ako mag-isip eh parang pag nakita ko na hindi stuck yung tao pag nakita ko na yung tao is um uh ready to move forward so i think that's a that's a best indicator that it's it's working kasi yeah. kung kung ang emple, empleyado mo continues to whine, di ba? Or ang empleyado mo continues to be stuck. So, ibig sabihin yan, medyo may kailangan pa nating, ano, di ba? Kailangan pa nating to work on that, right? Yeah. Pero hindi natin titigilan yun, di ba? Hanggang sa, you know, makapag-move uh, forward sila. Yeah. So, parang, ano yan, kumbaga sa na, ano, uh, na broken heart today, ready to move on. <laughs> <laughs> parang gano'n na <laughs> Okay, we have another question from the an- anonymous uh, attendee. Um, is there a prescribed number of coaching mentoring sessions for each employee? And how do we know if coaching is the right intervention? Ayan. It, does anyone want to? Uh, for us, Cecil, uh, one coach can take on as many as only two coaches. Kasi he'll be doing this on top of his workload eh. Mm-hmm. So para naman hindi rin ma-burden si coach, uh, dalawang coaches ang pwedeng ma-assign sa kanya. Tapos, uh, they are expected to meet once a month. Once a month. So dapat in a year, maka 10 to 12 sessions uh, ang bawat pair. Yun. There are pairs na yung isa na sa Manila, yung isa na sa Visaya. So nagfo-phone phone coaching sila. Minsan naman um may times na pupunta yung coach dun sa coachi or yung coachi sa coach. So we make ways to make it work no kasi hindi parating ganun ka ideal yung setup. Uh, like for this pandemic, ang ang akala nga namin hihinto eh. Pero hmm. nagulat kami na yung mga coaches tinatawagan yung coaches, nagpapaschedule ng appointment. So, natutuwa kami na, uy, grabe, talagang kasama mm. na yun sa ano nila, kasama na yun sa routine ng buhay nila, na meron talagang coaching. So, na-invite na ba yung, na-instill na yung discipline of uh, 
coaching. Sabi ko nga kay ano, sabi ko nga kay Julius. Alam mo Julius siguro talagang na ano na sa nasa kultura na ng puto ng coaching kasi dati pag nagtawagan, "Oh, Angela, oh, kumusta?" "Oh, coach." Ngayon, ngayon na ganoon eh. "Oh, coach, kumusta?" "Kumusta na coach mo?" Ganoon na. So, nag-iba yung lingo, nag-iba yung pati yung re- in terms of relationship nag-iba. Kasi during the three day workshop of Julius, lum Lumalalim eh. Lumalalim yung discussions. Lumala- mm-hmm. Nag-open up yung coaches. So, in the process, you get to know each other. You get to know each the, the coaches, your co-coaches. And then, that's when you feel comfortable sharing. And then, you also feel comfortable and not threatened to ask pagka meron kang problema or may issues ka dun sa coaching mo. So, mm-hmm. pareho kami ni Wen. Naging kultura na siya sa organization. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you mean internal coaches nga, Ange? Yes, internal yes. coaches. Yes. Oh, ang sarap kayo maging coach, eh, di ba? Babayad ka pa ng mahal. Labas <laughs> <laughs> ka pa. <laughs> diba? and, and the bond that, that uh, is formed, no? Yes. I'm just wondering, Ange, no? Yung coach ba is, should be in the same department or a different department from the coachee or a related group ba? Ganun. Sa amin, it's not the boss. Definitely not the boss. Kasi it's uh, embedded in the role of the boss to coach his subordinate, yeah. diba? So, ang ideally, it's within the department, but not the boss. Because we wanted them to be able to ask technical questions also. We wanted them to, not, not ask, sorry. We wanted them to take up technical issues also na somehow related to the job para the other the coach can also relate and understand where the coach is coming from but kung nauubusan kami ng coaches within the department lumalabas na kami kumukuha na kami ng coaches sa ibang department and it works like me one coachy is from HR another coachy is from another department and it works nakaka nakaka-relate naman kami to, yeah. This year pala, I have two coaches, both outside HR. So, although I am not of a big help do sa uh, uh, technical portion, but the process questions, I think, is uh, also helping them. Yeah. Oh, kasi diba, you don't have to be a knowledge expert. Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yeah. You are the process expert. Eh. Mm-hmm. Oh, but let me ask when naman, no? Does yeah. everybody in your organization, you know, all the leaders, are, is everybody qualified to be a coach? Or are there certain types of personalities or people na, uy, ito hindi pwede to, kahit pag-arali namin mag-coach to, hindi to <laughs> Well, <laughs> ako kasi medyo, nandun, I, I'm operating on uh, the principle that, you know, um, anyone is really capable. Mm-hmm. Doon ako nag-ooperate eh. Hindi parang parang hirap i-judge yung tao na hindi siya capable. But anyone is really capable. And it's just a matter of really uh, building the person's skills. I think everyone is capable to become a coach or to become a mentor. But of course, in mentoring, syempre kailangan pro ano ka diyan, uh, content expert ka, di ba? Mm-hmm. So so for you to become a mentor, but as a coach, um Ako kasi, ano eh, uh, yun nga, naniniwala ko everyone is capable. So long as may puso ka eh, no, to, to do that, no, to do that. And you have that, yun nga, yun, g- dapat genuine, ano eh, uh, genuine uh, uh, concern, no, uh, uh, to people. I, I think, you know, everybody has, uh, has that capability. Yeah. Importante talaga yung puso, ano? Yeah. Siguro, Importante. Puso kesa just, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think we have another question from the attendees. Uh, from Marian Concepcion Mamuel. I think she's a teacher. So hi, teacher Marian. Your question is, as a teacher, is it possible for us to coach or mentor online since our clients are students? You think they will understand if we coach, mentor them. What can you, su- can you suggest better ways? Thank you very much. Yeah. I think coaching go you can coach anybody eh. the best people to coach nga are the are your family 
de ba? Your children. Sometimes you can use it on your husband. <laughs> Pero I I agree with where no. For as long as you have the coach's heart and the coach's mindset, and you are selfless, de ba? I mean, right. you're doing it not for you. It's not about you, but it's all about the coachy. For as long as you have that mindset and that heart, anybody can coach. Mm. But the minute you make it all about you, you na, mm. may problema mm-hmm. na. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I agree. It's really like, you know, an egoless, di ba? In, mm-hmm. An egoless. In fact, the, our, our um, teacher, no? our teachers, actually, ano yan, saktong-sakto yan. I mean, you know, they, they're capable, no? they're very capable. Uh, una-una na lang sa pag-mentor eh. Ay, ano na eh, skill na nila yan, di ba? Yung, 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 yung mentoring skill, no? And, yeah, I agree with uh, Anj. Anybody can coach, actually. Anybody can coach. Well, that's very encouraging. Uh, I think the, the specific question pa of Marian, uh, being a teacher, is, you know, coaching online or mentoring online. So, do you think it would be it, effective? Parang now, it's inevitable. It is. <laughs> Yeah. Diba? It is. Yeah. Oh. In fact, um, just to share with you, um, syempre, I, I mentioned earlier, nak naka tie into sa leadership program namin. So when we do our online uh, uh, pilot uh, program in August, so kailangan pati si coaching online naren, no? Mm-hmm. So so we're also going to do it uh, uh, online, no? So so well, it's aside from being it's inevitable, I think it would work. It would work. Actually, di ba? Meron nga tayong telecoaching, di ba? Yeah. You can also use mm-hmm. phone, no? Or even text, no? For that matter. Yeah. yeah. So, yun, Teacher Marian, you can do it online. We have another question from participant AU. And his question is, uh, is it possible to have a subordinate or a rank and file to be designated as a coach uh, of a leader? So, in other words, uh, a lower ranking person will coach a leader. Yung, yung yata yung kanyang... Uh, depends mm-hmm. on the objective of the coaching relationship. Mm-hmm. Kasi sabi nga ni Julius, pagka, ang coaching kasi, di ba, dapat uh, process expert ka eh. Hindi ka naman kailangan content expert. So, first long as you know the process, kasi pwede yun eh, na subordinate will coach a boss on a topic that the boss is not knowledgeable about, I think that's possible. What do you think, when? I'm not sure. Pero ako, parang okay. Okay lang siya. Well, um, pwede naman. Kanya lang, uh, ako, well, kasi ako, yung, yung, my opinion with, uh, to that is that, kasi um, usually when we coach and mentor, meron tayong Meron tayong sinusunod din na ano, di ba, na, na proseso, no? So, when we, example, when we um, uh, build knowledge or when we, we, we enhance knowledge, we uh, apply both mentoring and uh, coaching, di ba? Tapos kapag skills din or kapag personal system, we also apply uh, mentoring and coaching. But there's such a thing as mindset, oh, di ba? So, yung mindset naman na yan, talagang coaching ang gagamitin natin. So, it may it may be possible but it might be difficult kung rank and file to the to the boss. That's just my opinion na. Ah. It might be difficult because um maraming ang proseso siyang uh, uh, dinadaan. Yeah. Okay, there you have it. Uh, possible depending on the objectives, but it may be difficult. Okay, any other questions from the audience? If not, I'll be asking one last question of the panelists. Okay, your chance. Okay, there's uh, another question from an anonymous attendee. What were your considerations in getting your provider for your internal coaching program? So in other words, how did you use your provider? (laughs) Okay, can I start? Okay, sure. Okay, we considered two. Pero uh, our decision to engage Benchmark uh, was just because of one thing. 
they made it look so simple. Parang pinadali nila yung proseso. Hindi kanila nila pahihirapan, in short. Uh, <laughs> hindi kanila nila pahihirapan. Hindi siya parang sobrang taas na hindi mo maabot. Mm-hmm. They will they will teach you in such a way that it's so workable. That And then they will always be there eh, to handhold you. Uh, hindi ka nila bibitawan. Even with the forms, we've consulted sila Julius. And they've been very generous in giving advices and giving tips. So, I we've found a, a very good partner in coaching in the team of Julius. Uh, kasi, from the start until now, hindi nila kami binitawan talaga. Uh, pati yung mga coaches namin felt so at home with them during the three-day certification program to the point na may nagsushow ng emotion sa lalaki, <laughs> ha? <laughs> Kasi they have this gift, they have this gift of really touching you, eh, na mapapalabas nila, ma, mapapa, madudraw out nila talaga sa'yo yung tinatago mo. <laughs> so, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> or, yun, yun din kasi yung skill na gusto nilang makuha mo. Kaya, yun, nakakaano lang. Uh, it's it's really very comforting to have a partner who will really handhold you and uh, ensure that the program is successful. So, ako naman, uh, Ange. <laughs> next. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, ako siguro, ano eh, ang, ang number one sa akin is chemistry. Di ba? So, kailangan na iintindihan ka eh, no? Without you, um, kahit na hindi mo articulate lahat, na iintindihan ka kung anong need mo. Um, chemistry is one, no? Uh, number two is, you also have to choose um, a group um, na dapat genuine yung relationship. Diba? Genuine concern talaga. Kasi ma, sabi ko nga kanina, you cannot fake it eh. Diba? Um, hindi negosyo ang habol. Diba? It's really like a genuine, um, uh, yung, yung goal niya is genuine na gusto ko niyang tulungan. No? Uh, that, that he really wants to uh, help your employees, uh, to help your uh, company. Ang dami ng pinagdaanan ng bangko ko. Ang RCBC has been through a lot already. And, and uh, they've been there no in in every step of the way no whether yon kinuwento ko kanina whether in a crisis or whether it's a transition or a leadership transition etc no so they've they've been with with us. so importante yon na na yung ka-partner mo because you know hindi, hindi lang naman benchmark syempre yung ano namin diba yung mga ibang partners namin with other programs diba pero yun ang hinahanap ko parati if this particular uh, group of individuals uh, totoo, di ba? These are, these are genuine partners of uh, the organization and their objective is para makatulong uh, para makatulong sa'yo uh, to develop your uh, uh, people no? uh, to develop the organization as a whole. Yeah. Ayun, so beautifully said. So <laughs> attributes that uh, they were looking for, Ange and, and when are yung yung uh, yung totoo yung genuine saka yes. yung sinabi ni Ange, uh, hindi sila pinahirapan no parang yes yes this is with maliwanag simple mm-hmm. yeah Ayan. okay so we have just one more question to ask and this would be the last question uh, in this chilak so um, participants you still have the chance to throw in your questions but my last question for our panelists would be, you know, since like uh, Miss Maribel, she mentioned that uh, to take care of others, we have to take care of ourselves first. In sa aeroplano nga, you, you put your own mask first before assisting mm. others. Diba? Right, Sabi. right. So, uh, let me put that into a powerful question. You know, you sabi naman <laughs> you ask powerful questions. What abilities or talents have you developed or discovered that help you to cope with this crisis? And what sagot niyo dyan when... With the crisis? So this has nothing to do with coaching. 
Tama ba? No, oo. Oh, oh. Ah, okay. With the crisis. Uh-uh. So, ang context is replenishing our cup. Parang ganon. Yes. Yun ang context. Yun. Taking care of ourselves. Yes. Yes. Una ko? <laughs> Sige, Ange. <laughs> parang hindi siya ability eh. Parang it's more of a realization that okay. you shouldn't forget the basics. The basic of family and faith. That these are the most valuable things in life and these are the only things that you can hold on to if everything else is in shambles. So you go back to your core, you go back to your core and that's uh, your faith and family because all the, parang in life kasi you have this tendency to neglect this eh, di ba? Kasi parati mong kasama, di ba? Pero parang sabi, siguro sabi ng Diyos, hindi, tingnan mo kung ano talaga yung importante sa buhay. So this pandemic, yun, yun lang yung ano ko, yun lang yung nakakaiyak naman yung huli mong tanong. <laughs> <laughs> yun, lang, yun lang yung realization ko that it brought me back to my core right, right. Mm. and your core is family family and my yeah, family, family. Mm. and oh beautiful okay. and uh, <laughs> yeah um well uh syempre number one yan di ba gratefulness no gratefulness uh uh, for all the uh, for all the blessings, no, regardless of the situation that we're in at this point. Uh, important yun, very strong ang support structure mo, uh, pamilya mo, di ba? As well as yung pamilya mo sa opisina, which is my HR team. Yeah, that's that's a very you know that's a very uh, strong support structure. Pero papatulong ko yung tanong mo, sa si yung ability. <laughs> Kung ano pa na-develop nating ability ngayong crisis, mapatulang ko yung tanong mo. Unang-una, no? Unang-una, ay natuto akong maggupit ng buhok ng asawa ko. No? <laughs> I became a hair stylist. As a matter of fact, after this chillax session, I have my next appointment at 4.30 is to cut the hair of my husband. No? At, uh, after this uh, particular session. Of course, we develop, lahat tayo, malamang dito sa audience, ang daming nag, natuto magluto, no? I mean, you know, um, experimenting several whatever dishes. But of course, um, uh, I also have this, uh, you've mentioned earlier, I really have this love and passion for music. Okay? Um, yes. It somehow gives you a, ano kasi, a, a, you know, a positive energy, di ba? Music gives you really positive energy. It drives you to, you know, it drives you to move on. And sa akin, simple, simple lang din ang motto ko during this three months, uh, you know, three months uh, experience that uh, we have, we, we've had, no? When, when everything gets difficult, no? And gets uh, overwhelming. Basta simple lang ako, one day at a time lang tayo. Diba? Just one day at a time. Ganun lang. So that's wow. it for me, Ceci. <laughs> Gratefulness and one day at a time. And I hope we hear you sing one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> in, in another session. <laughs> in another <laughs> session. <laughs> Any last questions from the participants? Uh, okay, well, that's a question. What was the most difficult coaching case you encountered in your organization? Do we have time for that? Or should we just type the, ano na lang, um, the answer? Type na lang siguro, no? Um, yeah. Hey, guy, are you there? Are we, you know, it's already... Yes, it's uh, already four. Yes, thank you, ladies. You have it there. Three beautiful ladies sharing their insights. Thank you, Cecil, for moderating. I have when... a last, long, eh, guy. I have a last uh, message for our participants. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So I, I just want to say, and uh, naalala ko lang to kanina, that when I was starting with HR and training, I had a mentor, you know, in Team Up, and uh, well, because it was HR. But you know, I just want to invite the participants, the teachers, the 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 people, the young people who are starting in the education or training profession, uh, kumuha kayo ng mentor. And makikita nyo sila dito sa PSTD. You know, yung medyo mga... 
medyo older people like me, no? So, for uh, yung mga kagaya ko na medyo older people, no? Adopt a mentee so that, you know, the this profession in this country can progress to the next level. So, I invite everybody. Uh, PSCD is very new. Let's uh, meet up here and help each other. Ayun. Back to you, Egay. Hey, thank you, Cecil, for saying that. I'm sure marami na namang napulot yung ating mga audience. Totoo yan, ano? Talagang there are so many people that you can run to, especially in our group PSTD. Kaya nga ako tayo may Oplan Hope for us to share our skills, our knowledge, and our time for those who would need any assistance. So thank you also to Wen, Ruena, Angela, yes. two beautiful ladies who shared their insights and experiences. Maganda po ang inyong karanasan. Thank you for sharing that <laughs> with us. And you're, you're most welcome. Yes. Well, meron pa ko tayong future uh, engagement, Ma'am Rowena and Ma'am Angela. And for those who are interested to join our future uh, sessions, please join us to our, in our How to Manage Emotions, which will be this, led by Ms. Luz uh, Mercurio, and Experiential Learning in Digital Space. We have very good speakers for these topics. And in this session, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to get a certificate. Unlike Kanina na mentioned ni Cecil, for the Chillax, hindi po tayo magkaka certificate, but only the learning sessions in the future. So join us again in the future. So please, I, we hope you had a good afternoon of learning and having insights with our coaching and mentoring. Sa akin, if I may share, I think, yung sinasabi nila, mindfulness and the heart. Kasi kung hindi mo talaga isa sa isip to, you could always find excuses not to coach or mentor. And you should have a heart in order to share and help others develop. So let's continue doing that. So let's, we hope to see you in our future session. Thank you for your time. Ladies, thank you for sharing. Thank you. That. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Audience, thank you. See you again in our Keep future. Keep safe. Session. Yeah. Stay safe and have fun this weekend. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye. Goodbye.